Dr. Nan Boss. If I haven't met you yet, I'm the owner of Best Friends Veterinary Center. In 2009, the Wisconsin State Legislature passed some new regulations requiring us to fully inform you of the risks of any procedure that we're recommending for your pet, as well as the benefits, and that information must be delivered by a doctor. We thought we would make that process more efficient by videotaping the informed consent discussion for all of our common anesthetic procedures. In dentistry, the major risk comes from the anesthesia. It's impossible to clean and polish a pet's teeth properly without anesthesia. Our clients are often fearful of anesthesia, but today's modern anesthetics and monitoring techniques make this risk very small. Periodontal disease, on the other hand, shortens a pet's life expectancy by several years, whereas the anesthesia is unlikely to shorten it at all. In fact, you can consider dentistry to be life-saving in most cases. This is not to say that the risk of anesthesia is zero. It's a fraction of 1%, far lower than most pet owners think it is, but there is risk there. Most unexpected deaths under anesthesia occur because of an undiagnosed heart problem. That's why we strongly recommend an electrocardiogram before anesthesia. What we're looking for is an abnormality in the electrical signal that controls the heartbeat. A heart that is having a mild problem that is not noticeable during normal activities can fail when stressed by heavy exercise or anesthesia. It's an irregular heartbeat or an inability for the signal to travel through the heart normally that can cause an 18-year-old basketball player to drop dead on the court. That's why the NCAA and um, a lot of high school sports associations are requiring ECG screening for their athletes. And the same thing is true for pets. Before the stress of anesthesia, we should be testing their heart to make sure it's working okay. Um, this is the ECG strip, what it looks like. It's just like what you would see on a heart monitor at a hospital. Um, and this little rhythm strip will help us to know whether that pet is going to do all right under anesthesia. It's not a perfect test. We can't diagnose every heart problem from the ECG strip, but we can catch a lot of them. We probably postpone or um, cancel about half a dozen surgeries a year because of an abnormality we find on the ECG. Electrical conduction malfunctions can be genetic and inherited, as with young pets or athletes, or they can develop later in life. The most severe forms are most common among young, apparently healthy animals. I actually worry less about elderly pets undergoing anesthesia than I do about young ones. Age itself is never an impediment to anesthesia. The important thing is whether the major, major organs, the kidneys, liver, and heart are functioning properly. That's why we do pre-anesthetic blood work and heart screening. We cancel or postpone half a dozen procedures every year because of an abnormality on the ECG screen. Abnormalities that appear on blood tests can also cause us to postpone a procedure, but most commonly they lead to adjustments in the fluid or the anesthetic drugs that we choose. We monitor blood pressure and temperature closely while pets are under anesthesia because low blood pressure and temperature are the most common side effects of anesthesia. Some pets do better on one anesthetic drug than another or wake up more quickly or slowly than others. Each time we administer anesthesia to a pet, we keep careful notes of how the pet responded uh, so that if there's a problem with a particular anesthetic drug or regimen, we can change it the next time. Occasionally a pet will have an allergic reaction to a medication that we use, and that too may change our protocol the next time. For dental work in dogs, the most common problem that we'll find when they're under anesthesia is loose or broken teeth. In periodontal disease, if less than 50% of the root of the tooth is still attached to the bone, that tooth needs to be extracted. Sometimes if the gum is receded and there's a pocket of infection around the tooth, we can infuse an antibiotic gel that will help get rid of that infection and allow us to save the tooth. If the tooth is broken but the pulp is not exposed, a lot of times we can leave that tooth alone. Uh, but if the pulp is exposed and bacteria can get down into that root, that tooth either needs a root canal or it needs to be extracted. X-rays of the teeth help us to find problems under the gum line, and about 25% of the problems that we find on dentistry are beneath the gum line where you, we couldn't see them if we didn't have the dental X-rays. Occasionally we discover resorptive lesions where the enamel and dentin of the tooth are being eaten away or tumors in the mouth. We will call you during your pet's procedure if we do so that we can decide what to do about what we find. You have made a great decision to have your pet's dental cleaning done. This is going to add years to his or her life. And thank you for choosing Best Friends Veterinary Center for your pet's dental health care.